Yo, what's up, dude? How's it going? So I thought I'd come on and give you a little bit closer and better look at the Greco SG I showed at the live show a few days ago. Uh, this is a 1990, it's called the a 1990 Greco SS600, made in Japan, I believe. It could be Korean made, but I don't think so. I think it's made in Japan um, in the uh, Fujigen factory, uh, alongside like Orville, right? So Greco, Orville, it's a set neck. Um, mahogany body, three-piece mahogany neck. I actually found the ad for it. <laughs> Uh, you know, the vintage style tuners, rosewood fingerboard, dot inlays. Uh, it's there, I forget, they're called like Screamers, I think. I forget the name of the pickups. Screamers, I think. <laughs> I was just looking at the ad and I already forget it. And then uh, two volumes, two tones. Very typical uh, Gibson SG setup. In fact, the, the horns are pretty identical to the real uh, SG. Uh, the only reason why they can get away with it and other manufacturers can is because... It was made solely for the Japanese market, and in Japan, Gibson doesn't have any of their trademarks like they do in other countries. Uh, they sued and lost the suit. So that's why you see so many exact Gibson copies. It won't say Gibson. It'll say Orville or Greco, but the shape will be perfect, including the headstock. Uh, you don't get that any other place other than Japan, and it's only for the Japanese market. If you tried to import a whole bunch of Orvilles and Grecos into the U.S. for retail sale, Gibson would come after you and say, oh, no, 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 you can't, you can't sell those. That's a copy, that's a trademark violation in this country. Uh, you can sell them all you want out of Japan, which is why when my friend bought this, he bought this out of Japan. He bought it off of eBay. He bought it and had it uh, shipped over. Now, he had purchased an FGN guitar a couple years ago, showed up perfectly, it was well-packed and all that. This guy didn't pack it nearly as well, and the neck snapped off. It had a broken neck. And it didn't break completely off, thank God. It was probably being held together, quite frankly, by this bolt a little bit, <laughs> right? <laughs> by the uh, tuning, uh, I mean, I mean the, uh, the strap button screw, and uh, a little bit, really, by this little plate in the front in the paint and a little bit, you know, holding it together. So it never fully detached. And that was a good thing. So what I did was I got some of these. Um, this is a, um, here's a whole, here's a whole bag of them. So what you get is you get like, um, these easy glide syringes, right? Um, these are not made for medicine. These are made for all kinds of stuff, marinades, glues, epoxy, well, you know, whatever you need to get into a small place that you can't reach, like a crack in a guitar, you'd use something like this. So I bought a bunch of these. Here's one, the, the tip dried, so the glue in there is still wet. I'd probably break the tip off, uh, the, you know, the glue off the tip. I could probably get this going again, but whatever. I can screw the tip off and put a brand new tip on if I want. But this basically is uh, a needle that injects the glue. And I, I would I just spread um, the, that fissure open a little bit. You, know, you don't want to do too much because you don't want to make it any worse. And just enough so I could get the needle right in that, you know, into the break point, get it, it down as far as I could get it in there, and then just start injecting the glue until I started to see it come out of the sides, back the needle out a little bit, inject a lot more glue until you start to see it coming out, back the needle out a little bit, inject a lot more glue. I mean, just injecting, injecting on this side, on that side, in the back, all over. You know, if you ever had a tooth pulled and the guy <laughs> gives you about 15 shots in your <laughs> jaw and in the, everywhere to numb you up, that's what it was like. It was like needle after needle after needle, injecting glue, and then I finally uh, clamped it up, and the glue came out everywhere. You use a wet paper towel to just sort of soak that, you know, get rid of that. It's not perfect, but it takes off like 99% of it. And But you don't want to get it too wet because you don't want to thin out the glue. Right, you don't want to thin that glue out. I use Type Bond Three, and uh, the reason why I use Type Bond Three uh, is mainly because uh, it was their newest formula, and um, it had a long setup time, so it, it, it had a working time of 30 to 60 minutes, 
which is great. You know, uh, I don't have to worry about it setting up before I'm ready to clamp it up. And uh, it was waterproof uh, instead of water resistant, which I thought was a better thing. So I went with that. And like all the other tight bonds, once it's dry, it's good. F you know, it's stronger than the wood itself. So um, uh, it it's been no problem at all. So I, uh, you know, um, let it sit clamped up for about a day and a half, maybe about 36 hours. Uh, actually, probably only about a day with the clamps, the more I think about it. About a day with the clamps. Um, maybe even only 18 hours, the more I think about it. Because I, I, I did it about 9 o'clock at night. And I think I took them off, like, the next morning, the day after the next. I, I think I went a full day. I took the clamps off. And then I let it sit, like, another day Yeah, after I took the clamps off. I could tell already when I took the clamps off. It, would, it had really set up. And I, I sponged it out and, 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 you know, cleaned off a lot more of the excess glue. But I didn't want to go too nuts because I didn't want to soften the joint until I was really ready to string it up. And I just waited another full day. And then it was, I mean, I mean, just completely set up. I mean, it really was the day before. But my paranoia, <laughs> I was like, down deep inside there, it's probably still wet. Wait. And I did. And um, then the next day... You know, at some point, you got to put your big boy pants on and just string it up and see if it holds the tension. Admittedly, <laughs> when I first strung it up, I and, and there's still nines on here. I put nines on it, and I strung it to D instead of E, a full step lower, just to see how that, how that worked out. And then eventually, I went up to E, and I'm in E. I'm at standard tuning. Uh, now... But they are, uh, you know, they're a cool, definitely a cool guitar. Uh, this sold for sixty thousand. I found the ad sold for sixty thousand um, yen in nineteen ninety. That was the the manufacturer's suggested list price. That works out in at today's again. The exchange rate varies day to day. At today's exchange rate, that's about five hundred and twenty five dollars. Um, I don't know. I have no idea what it was. Uh, at the time, I don't. I have no idea whether, if anything, the yen was probably a lot stronger against the dollar in 1990 because in 1990 the U.S. was sort of going through a little recession. So I wouldn't doubt. Certainly by 91 it was, but 90 was started sort of the beginning of a slowdown. So um, I have no idea, but five and a quarter, roughly, was the the asking price. Who knows what they went for. Uh, and that's about what you see them for out there now used. You see them about, you know, five fifty, six hundred, seven hundred bucks, somewhere around that. Because, you know, eventually you say to yourself, well, why not just get a Gibson? By the time you get up to about eight hundred bucks, you could get a used Gibson, you know, without a problem. But this is definitely cool. Let's uh check out some of the pickups here really quickly. And then Sounds good. And then um, let's just try a different uh, patch here. Something a little bit. This is um, just a little, um, a little bit more of a crunch than the crazy. That other patch is obviously a solo. <laughs> Oh, sorry. And all the way up, yeah. pretty good and then uh, I think I had a clean rig in here it's got um unfortunately it's got um a little delay on it but I think it sounds good mm -hmm. 
That's uh, both pickups. Here's the neck. Both again. And then here's the bridge. You can really pick up that little scrape, huh? Really gets that. There's both. And you lose the scrape completely once you go to the, the bridge. I mean, the, uh, the neck. All right, dudes. Well, there you have it. 1990 Greco SS600 in ebony. I don't think they made another color. Brought back from the dead after a snap neck. Uh, just so you know, he did get all of his money back. The guy just refunded all his money. Then it just became, at this point, it's a free guitar. You know, can we can we clamp it and fix it? And we, we could. It did work. I mean, there was no guarantee it was going to work. And there's no guarantee it's going to last. But uh, for now, it's working. And it's playing. And uh, I don't know. If I had to guess, I'd say it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, unless, of course, you drop it. <laughs> then you're on your own. All right, dudes, there you have it. As always, thanks so much for stopping by. If you're curious, that's just the label was still on the back of the... That can probably come off with a little bit of a uh, goof off or goo gone or something. Um, but that's his problem. All right, dudes, as always, thanks for stopping by. And rock on. <laughs>